Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. This is the first of two episodes where we're going to look at two different A4s that have been sent in to me uh, to have a look at by the same owner. And in this first, uh, or part one should I say, we're going to be looking at this LNER Silver Jubilee liveried A4. There's two pieces of plastic that have come adrift in the polythene wrapper there, so I'm going to keep them aside. But this is a Lilliput model, and this is the first of the two we're going to look at. We'll look at the second one in next week's episode. Now this, as I said, is a Lilliput or Trix A4. There's quite a lot of hair wrapped around those gears there. And this is unusual in the fact that it's permanently linked by this wire. I mean, look at that hair there. I don't know whose that is, but... Uh, it was certainly wrapped around that axle. That piece has also come adrift, which converts the tender from a standard streamlined tender to a streamlined one. And giving it a quick battery test, there's not much life in this at all. It's very noisy and it is an intermittent runner. I'm putting it on the track to give a test and it's not working very well at all. So we're going to have to strip this model down and have a look and see if we can get it working. As I was saying, this loco and tender are permanently coupled by a wire. There's plenty of wire. You could uh, certainly have a, quite a big gap between these. I'm just going to treat myself to a custard cream in my tea there. Staple fodder for filming trash to track is a cup of tea and a custard cream. So what I'm going to do, um, the rear coupling on this model is also broken, so we'll have to have a look at that later on. And everything seems to be in order. There's a buffer missing there. Now you'll see throughout this video that uh, I don't actually replace that buffer. I forget to do it on camera. But rest assured, when this A4 went back to its owner, I had replaced both of the front buffers. Now to remove the tender um, body shell, you have to undo this screw here that's um, on the foot plate. Undo this screw and remove it with a pair of tweezer nose pliers as it was quite fiddly. And then the tender body shell just lifts off. However, this is going to be quite tricky to work on. As the, the wire goes through the body shell. There's quite a large die cast weight there. I'm happy to see there's no signs of Mazak butt on that. But yeah, the, because the wire goes through the tender body shell, you can't actually separate anything. Everything has to be uh, left as it is. Unless you want a big soldering job. And it's a quite a pain in the ass to be honest now i'm just going to mark that coil cover there with a pencil because i'm not entirely sure how many um poles this motor's got and having done a turn there you can see it's a three pole motor and having a large flat motor is actually handy as the, the tender will rest upside down on that motor while i take this rear keeper plate off this is held in place with two screws and once you unscrew them the keeper plate comes away and allows you to remove all of the tender axles. It's important you remember which way around the axles go, as the gears on this axles are um, helical, I believe that's the word, helical, helical gears, and they have to go in the correct way, otherwise they won't mesh up with the worm gear properly. So all four axles have been removed, and you can see there there's a drive shaft in there. I'm also going to unscrew and remove the remains of this broken coupling on the back as I'm going to have to try and find a replacement or make one. And then using a methylate spirits on some cotton bud, I'm going to remove some of this old lubrication that has dried. And I'm also just realised that the drive shaft actually lifts out. So I'm going to remove that in its entirety and clean that as a separate item. So now that's really given me good access in here to remove all this crud and grime that's built up and make sure that it's perfectly clean, ready for when we reassemble the model. This Lilliput or uh, Trix model has uh, its origins um, in the late 70s, I believe, and it's not quite double O scale, it's more like HO. And Backman A4's, um, their genesis is in this model. In fact, I think that Backman still use, or at least did until recently, the body shells of this model. Now I've cleaned the drive shaft there with the cotton bud and methylate spirits and I'm just using an old paintbrush to just dust out the chassis there. And then using a cocktail stick I'm going to put some of this silicon grease on the worm gears. Ready for when I put it back in because cleaning it has removed all of the lubrication that was present. So just using a cocktail stick I just smear a slight amount of uh, grease on all of the 
brass worm gears that are in here. Metal on metal gears need to be lubricated, otherwise they will wear away pretty quickly. I'm also going to put a tiny amount of oil on this rear shaft here where that brass bearing goes. And then just refit the bearing cup. And once that's all properly lubricated, I'm going to drop it back down into the tender chassis, making sure it's the correct way. And making sure that all those um, gears engage with the worm gear on the motor. I'm now going to just have a check of these traction tyres, make sure they're still with a nice and tight and they're not cracking. Which they're not, which is good. And then I'm going to put a small amount of grease on these gears and then drop the wheels back in place as they came out. These non-driven gears are given a quick clean over to remove any of the old um, grease and lubrication that was left on them. And then the wheel treads are given a good thorough cleaning. You can see the amount of dirt that's come off that wheel there on that cotton bud. Once clean, the axles are put back in place and I'm just lining up there. As like I said earlier, these are helical gears on these wheels um, and they must go in the correct way. And then there's a small amount of oil placed in as these axles sit directly into that die casting with no proper bearings. Once that's done, the base keeper plate is put back on and the screws reinserted and secured to keep the wheels in place. As I said before, in many of these trash to tracks, don't over tighten your screws, otherwise you'll de-thread and you can end up ruining the die casting. Now that that's all done and you can see how shiny those wheels are, just going to give it a magnet test and the magnet on this motor is extremely strong there's no need for any remagnetization there and i'm just going to go around i cannot get the brushes out of this so i'm just going to go around the commutator and clean the gaps in the commutator to make sure there's no buildup of carbon and i also gave the um, commutator a quick wipe with a cotton bit of mess just to make sure it was nice and clean and again then a small amount of silicon grease was then spread on these gears at the top here from the motor as all the gears on this model are brass they do need some lubrication i just dilute the grease there with a tiny amount of modeling oil and then that's the motor and tender drive shafts and tender drive all serviced so i'm going to replace this weight to where it came from and just try and line it up as there is a hole in the bottom where the wires pass through and then there's a clip at the rear of the tender you have to engage and then push the front down and reinsert that screw we took away earlier on. I do find it handy to use these needle nose pliers just to hold these small screws in place. And then the tender screw was tightened up and that's basically the tender done. So now I'm going to give this a quick dusting as there's quite a lot of dust in that tender um, water filler area there because that cap came off. And there's a lot of dust on the front. Now to remove the body, um, this was quite difficult. As the screw down the chimney, as you will see shortly, this was quite difficult to remove. As somebody had drilled inside the weight inside this model. And they hadn't gone in straight. And they would tapped it, but it was, it was poor, to say the least. I mean, it looked like... Um, I mean, that, that's the hole at the bottom where the screw goes. But the hole at the top was horrendous. Again, this back weight here was fastened in place, so I left that where it was. And it is becoming apparent that this is a pain working on this model with these wires everywhere and the body shell not being able to be separated. So what I do is I'm going to unscrew this pickup unit here off the drive wheels by removing these two screws, as these will all need a good cleanup. Once these are removed, the chassis can be worked on away from the body shell, as that has separated the wires, which is handy. So I'm going to give the loco chassis a good dusting down now and I'm just going to make sure it is free rolling. None of the side rods are catching. I did this because one of the rods looked like it was a little bit bent. And then I'm going to go in the axles there with a cotton bit of mess to remove any old lubrication and dirt that's built up over the years. I then remove the screws underneath to remove this keeper plate. And it allows you full access to the axles there. Again, no proper bearings unfortunately. But I'll give this a clean up with a cotton bit of mess as well. And then once everything was cleaned, give it a lubrication with a small amount of modelling oil. I put this on all the axles and I also um, oil the linkages, but I do that later on. You can see here that the caper plate there has got quite a lot of dirt build upon it. 
the grease in this bit had gone very waxy and needed to come off so this was given a thorough clean over again with cottonwood and methylated spirits and then this was replaced and the two screws reinserted ready for me to clean the wheels now to clean the wheels initially i just thought i could get away with using a cottonwood but the build up of the wheels was quite severe so i end up working over a damp paper towel and using a fiberglass pencil as i've said before the damp paper towel catches any stray fibers and stops them going into your fingers i also put the chassis on its side and clean the wheel backs because the pickups press onto the wheel backs on one side so they need to be clean to ensure good electrical conductivity i just turn the wheels there with my finger just to make sure that all the muck and detritus has been removed once I was happy, I cleaned the wheel backs finally with a cotton bud and meths again. Just to remove any of the loose fibres and dirt left over. One thing I did find interesting on this model was that the front right hand driving wheel was actually fitted with a traction tyre. Now I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this is because this um, front bit provides absolutely no drive at all. But this traction tyre had gathered quite a lot of muck over its years of use. So again with a cotton bud and working gently i removed all of the muck from this and as you'll see very shortly it was actually a quite um it was a very clean transparent yellow color once all the remove once all the uh, muck had been removed i'm now going to clean up the pickup part here i'm going to polish all that brass with my fiberglass pencil as you can see it's nice and shiny and then this was refitted back onto the chassis top and the two screws we removed earlier were refitted I'm hoping now that this general cleanup, as this model was quite dirty to be fair, the screw that holds this pickup plate in place has got a washer on it and actually provides electrical pickup for the other side of the chassis. So I'm going to put some Pico power lube on the thread just to ensure there's good electrical conductivity. The wheels on the loco section here both collect power um, from both sides of the rails and then pass it through to the motor. So the front weight was re-secured using the screw from underneath and then the chassis was simply clip fitted back into the body shell. Well that did prove to be quite a tight fit and I needed to use a screwdriver just to shoehorn it in. And then once that was back in place I had to try and line up that screw through the funnel in the wonky hole that had been drilled into that die cast weight before I um, came to work on the model. So that's this Trix or Lilliput A4 um, fully serviced, fully cleaned, and I'm going to put it on the track shortly after I've dusted it, and hopefully we will have a running loco. That streamlining on the tender part there was refitted in place and was secured with some satin varnish, just in case you need to remove it in the future. Using superglue would have um, run the risk of having white bloom on the body side, which would have ruined it. And after the rebuild, these two bits of plastic we found in the wrapper with the A4 obviously didn't come off this loco, as I didn't find anywhere where these would have broken up from. The rear coupling, I used an old DAPO coupling in the slot. Now, you can see it is quite a lot higher than standard tension lock couplings. But I just wanted to fit something that I could hook a train to. And with a tension lock hook, which is with the hook in place, it will hook to the tender and the tender will draw stock. So although not ideal, it is a working solution. And here you can see the A4 running up and down on the test bench, having been fully serviced and it is now back into operational condition. Although I am kicking myself that I didn't put the new buffer in the front there, as it does look quite odd with the buffer missing. Like I said, this model, although quite old now, does form the basis of Backman's A4, Although it isn't true double O scale, it is more of a mix between HO and double O. When compared with a Hornby A4, it is quite small. If you've got a locomotive you'd like to see featured on a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelrailways at gmail.com and we'll have a look at getting it sent over and who knows, it may feature in an episode all of its own. I'm going to leave you now with this Trix or Lilliput A4 running around the dining room table again. As, as I said in the last episode, my other um, DC testing layer I use, which is James's train set, is currently being worked on, so I'm not able to use it at the moment. Next week, we'll have a look at another A4 that was sent in by the same person. 
But until then, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.